Hello and welcome back to today's final part of A Splash of Paint, where it's time for us to read your own experimental artist, Alison Bord, as she brings her nosy cow to life in the concluding part of today's Try Your Hand Out project. Thanks, Matthew. Earlier on in the programme, you saw me start this cow portrait where I put some masking fluid on and I did my background and used some Stabilo pens to spray them. Now I'm going to finish it off for you today and sculpt it and try and provide it with some character. So looking back at my picture now that it's dry, I can see the areas that I need to work on and those areas are going to be shadows. And shadows, particularly for animals and people portraits, are incredibly important. Those are the things that make it three-dimensional and those are the things that give it the character. So the main areas of shadow that I'm looking on are going to be here in the ears, under the eye, around this side as well, under the nose, and in this fantastic hairy top knot that he's got. And when I've done that, then I'll take the masking fluid off and we'll have another look at it. So going back in with a really nice dark colour, which is going to be black and my brown. And I try very hard with my darks to not build them up in layers. I try to do it in one go so that I'm painting and with touching the paper as little as possible. So I'm going to start over here with this ear. I'm going to put my shadows in. As you can see, they are quite dark, but don't forget, don't worry, they will dry back. And I'm going to work over the top of the eye and underneath the eye, bringing it down. And then I'm going to use the water to blend out that colour and get the watercolour to do what it does best, which is to blend out into the wet into wet. So sculpting underneath the eye, bringing that colour down and pulling it all the way down to the bottom. And there we go, in one hit. Now, because I'm working vertically today, I am starting to get a little bit of a puddle here, but that's fine. I can just mop it up with the tip of my brush. I've got this lovely sable brush, which sucks all the color off of the page, and it will do the job for me. That one I'm pretty pleased with, that's done. So back in with my color, my black and my brown, starting on this side, using all those shadows that we created with the Stabilo pens to their best advantage, up the top, and then his shadow on this side comes down below the eye, comes into the centre a little bit, and again, wash out your brush, take the excess off onto your kitchen roll, and then back in. So blending that out this side, giving his ear a little bit of definition as I go, pulling that colour down, pulling it around, and then starting this side to just sculpt his face a little bit. There we go. Great, that's exactly what I was after. Now I can start to work under his nose, down here where it's really dark, pulling that colour up at the side. This is where you can start to see the masking fluid coming through where I've put his whiskers in, because cows do have a phenomenal number of whiskers, which you don't necessarily notice. Blending out that colour, pulling that up round the sides, and also blending it out a little bit into the bottom as well, so that his head doesn't look disembodied from his chest. I can start in with my greys, which will be the cerulean and the black. And I like to work really fast and really quickly because that way I don't poke it about and I don't faff about with it. So a few nice dark greys in here and a few dark greys on his top knot. And some of that dark colour down here. Always looks very dramatic when I put it on. But then you've got to remember that you're blending it out, using the water, using the brush to create that texture and that's when the sculpting occurs. So you've got these great shadows starting to appear. If you don't like it, great thing about watercolour, dab off the excess. So now I can start to work on the things that hopefully will bring his face out, which are going to be the eyes and the nostrils, for which I'd need a really dark dark. And I'm going to go for a blue dark. So I'm going back into this black with the cerulean. And I'm going to be very brave with my colour and make it as dark as I can. So back in here with the eyes. Now I've done a little bit of masking here already. As you can see where I wiped it over, there's just a little element of white coming through. And then this side, do the same. Try to make sure that the eyes are relatively even. You don't want them identical, but also you don't want one higher than the other. And then down here with the nostrils, by putting the dark area in and then using the water, same as you did before, to blend it right out. There we go. Take out the excess if you don't like it. And this time as well, I'm going to use the colour that's still on my brush, trying not to obliterate all of the white, because you've worked so hard to keep it, but to just use the side of the brush 
to put some of those shadows in. Right, one more thing before I can let that dry is that he's got a really lovely shadow just across the top of his nose, which will be the thing that defines where his nose starts down his face. There we go. And just while that's drying, I'm just going to add a slightly darker colour to the rest of his body. So we don't want the body to be too dominant, but equally we don't want the head to look disembodied. So I'm going to just put a dark colour down here, wash that out, blend it across, and hopefully that will start to blend into his nose. And again, if you don't like it, it's not the end of the world, take it out with the kitchen roll. There we go. That's working quite well for me, I like that. And I've got a darker shadow in this side. Now, I can use this area to paint negatively around because he's got a little white flash here. So I can build the colour up to it, which will suggest that white flash without actually having to paint it. So pulling the colour down, looking back. Am I happy with it? Am I not happy with it? No, nope, pretty happy with that. Just going to add, while that's still a bit damp, that shadow right deep in the top knot and then blend that out. So whilst I wait for that to dry and it needs to be dry so that I can take the masking fluid off, I'm going to work back in with my colours. And the next thing I want to attack when the masking fluid come off is coming off is to put all of the shadows and the detail in. So I'm going to use my large brush to mix up my colours and then I will probably add it back in on my painting with my rigger brush, my very fine brush, which you'll see me use in a minute. Now, you do need to be brave with your darks. There's no escaping it. So looking back at my painting, I need to assess whether I want brown darks or whether I want blue darks. And I quite like blue darks. So I'm going to mix up a lovely great big puddle of my cerulean and my black so that it's nice and strong. And I'm going to leave the brush in the palette, not put it back in the water, otherwise you'll just dilute it even further. So I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to switch to my rigger and make sure that the rigger is nicely coated in colour, ready for me to put all the detail in. Lovely. So, looking back at my painting, it's nice and dry now, and uh, the cold has gone off it and the shine's gone off it, so I can take the masking fluid off. Now, the Schmincke masking fluid works a little bit differently to the way normal masking fluids work, in that it breaks off in little pieces. So you do need to be a little bit careful with it because it's a, a relatively soft paper, but you can take your finger to it and rub off. They do tend to fly everywhere, but to me that's quite satisfying. Now you can see all those areas that I saved with the masking fluid. So you've got his little whiskers in down here. You've got the little elements of um, fluffy hair coming in where the white meets the brown. You've got the highlights that I saved in his top knot and you've got against the sky, you've got uh, some nice bright whites in there. Now, the great thing about using masking fluid on the Milford paper is because the Milford paper is so textural, you don't get a very solid hard line with the masking fluid and it works really well. So going to go back in and this is the great part of doing animal portraits. It's the sculpting and it's the putting in the little bits of detail. So I'm going to work back in now, and I'm just going to tidy a few areas up. So starting with the eyes, I'm going to put a slightly deeper shadow in there. And sometimes with the masking fluid, you decide that an area that you saved that was light, you might actually just want to get rid of. And that's fine. At least you were able to get rid of it rather than wishing that you'd saved it. So we go back in there, add a few touches back into the paint. Now I can start to add the shadow in his ear. So putting a line in there, putting a few tuft marks in, washing out the brush, blending out the line so it's not too hard. And there we go. Now you can see his ear actually looks like it folds in. Back over here. Actually, the way that the colour's dried over here is working very well for me. So I'm going to add, same as before, a few of the shadows in. Coming back over, blending out. Don't really like that highlight there, so I'm going to get rid of it. Putting that in. Now I can work with a little bit more water and work back into that top knot. So I can actually add, because this rig rigger brush is so fine, some hair and just start building up that texture that you've worked so hard to keep throughout the first stages of your painting. And this is when you can start seeing those pen marks come through as well. 
blending those out here and there so you don't get too hard a line. You don't want the hair to look like it's sitting on top of his head. You want it to look like it's sprouting out of the middle. And there we've got that little top knot, that little twist of hair in the middle, which is what gives him his character. Blend that out before it dries too hard. And then I can start working on the side of his face. Coming down here, adding a few shadows, because if you notice, it's actually darker where the brown meets the white. Blending that out so that you don't get that hard line. And then you can start to use your rigger brush to pull some of the areas of hair back into that white. Rigger brush is great for these textures. It does all the hard work for you. And again, there's your kitchen roll. If you don't like it, knock it back. Blending out, knocking back. So I'm going to have a good look at him. He's got a slight panda eye going on here, so I'm just going to go back in with the brown. Knock that back ever so slightly. That's better. Knock that back. Take the water to it. Blend it out. Take the water to it. Blend it out. That's better. And the last thing for me to do is to just work on this nose area and his nostrils. So drawing in this line across here, down around the nostril area, and on the other side as well, using the brush to blend that out, just strengthens the colour enough. Sometimes you find with Milford that where you give it a bit of a battering, where you take the masking fluid off, it can actually remove some of the paint as well. But that's OK, you can always add back in. What you can't do is take away. So just going to add that lovely little crease that he's got at the middle. Blend that out and come down to the bottom of his chin and work this area in, which I'm actually just going to switch back to my larger brush for. Just take a little bit of the brown coming back down here. Ooh, it's a bit watery. Have another go at that. There we go. Adding the brown back in. Just bringing the elements of the base of his mouth and the side of his head in together. And having a look and thinking, am I done? Do I need to poke it about any more? No, I don't. I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. So I hope you've enjoyed some of the techniques I've shown you today and I hope it encourages you to mix your media a little more. Thanks for joining me. I'm afraid it's nearly the end of today's programme. In fact, almost the end of the series. But before we go, we've just got time to cross over to the other side of the studio and welcome back popular pastel artists who kicked off our very first programme. Let's join Vic Beercroft as he prepares to kiss goodbye with his perfect pastel mouth project. For this art bite, we're going to draw a human mouth. Now, a lot of people, when drawing a mouth on a portrait, will draw it like this. Top lip, line between the lips, and the bottom lip. OK, it's very obviously a human mouth, but I prefer to use, rather than lines, tones. So we won't use that one. Instead, what we'll do is draw a line for between the lips. This is the line that gives us most of the expression. And then think about the difference between the top lip and the bottom lip. The top lip goes angled in slightly, so if the light is from above, that will be mostly in shadow. So very softly sketch out the outline of the top lip. Remember, it is soft. It's a soft edge. And underneath, most of the bottom lip, because it protrudes, will be highlighted. So the shadow underneath is the key thing here. It could be a little deeper shadow as it comes down to the chin. So there's no definite outline as you can see. Then what we'll do, we'll take the side of this pastel and we'll shade in the soft upper lip with no hard edges to it. A little bit of a, a soft corners to the mouth where we've got a smile. And the lower lip will be mostly highlighted so it'll be slightly lighter in tone, but the shadow underneath, and then we can probably just take a couple of highlights if it's a glossy lip, for example. A couple of highlights on there, a soft highlight on the top, and I think you'll agree that's much softer and more realistic than the first version. 
Now to finish off where it all started, thanks Vic. Well sadly folks, that's the end of the series. We hope that we've encouraged you to try something new and that you've had lots of fun. We've certainly had a great time seeing all your marvellous works of art and hearing all your fantastic feedback. In the meantime, keep your eyes out for the latest news from the SAA, including details of the largest and most popular hands-on art event being held in the UK. Book now to secure your ticket for It's All About Art at London's Business Design Centre from the 24th to the 26th of July. And for your chance to take part in free workshops and demonstrations, call 0800 980 or visit the SAA website at saa.co.uk for even more artistic advice and inspiration to support you on your creative journey. We look forward to seeing you again very soon. And in the meantime, from all of us here at Splashy Paint, happy painting. <laughs>